last session. So, uh, Ms. Honey, please come over. I welcome you all again. Now let us proceed to the third session of 6th International Islam and Liberty Conference on second day. In this session, we will be discussing institutional perspective. The chair of the session is Dr. Fahim Khan, Chairman, RCIB Islamabad, Pakistan. Please welcome. The first speaker of this session is Dr. Hanaf Furkani, lecturer at University of Islam, Nigiri, Ran. He will enlighten us about theory of destructive justice in Islamic perspective. Thank you, sir. The second speaker of the session at hand is Ms. Fatiha Tawait. She is a senior researcher at the University of Paris, France. Ms. Fatiha. Ms. Fatiha will discuss about property rights based on Muslim law, economic efficiency, and gender equality. And the final speaker of the session, Dr. Muhammad Afzal Parvez, a speaker in the United Kingdom. I now will hand over the session to the session chair. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmadu wa nasalli ala Rasul al-Kareem. I must uh, honor the, uh, the organizers of this conference. First, for inviting me to chair the session, and second, to chair the session on a topic which is very much in my heart for a long time, and I'm glad that I will be listening about it in this uh, session. The session in this session. The topic also has been entitled as institutions. And the titles that I see on the papers, together with this uh, concept of institution, give me an idea that the theme for this session should be economic liberty and distributive justice in Islamic perspective. The uh, two papers and the third paper I just saw, I did not see it uh, uh, before. But they are very relevant to this theme. But what can, what is the case for Islamic perspective in making an economy with, with economic liberty and distributive justice. These two things, economic liberty and distributive justice, are just new ideas uh, introduced in the, uh, during the last uh, 300 years, about 300 years. Adam Smith gave the mention, uh, gave the concept of economics, and his book, Wealth of Nations, just described the liberty of market, 
liberty in market that creates national wealth that makes the economy grow and this uh, thing explained or satisfied that economics is only what happens in the market the economics that we know has been happening in islamic uh, history has been appearing beyond market also as a result of the instructions in quran and sunnah so our economics is not merely the economics of market and if we are interested in seeing the liberty economic liberty we not only have to see it in the concept of market but in the concept of economics beyond market now the distributive justice is also not very uh, uh, old uh, concept it is also um, and developed during the last uh, 300 years and the most uh, uh, main theory that has been de developed on distributive justice on justice is raz theory of justice which refers to distributive justice also now these two concepts economic freedom and distributive justice has developed independently there is no relationship in between in fact they both deny each other economics does not speak of distributive justice economics that was developed by adam smith and has been followed up till now does not Uh, consider the distributive justice in which they are today will be discussing the distributive justice that, that has been discussed in economics is for the factors of production and uh, in the economic uh, in that uh, perspective and distributive and the justice theory of justice that Rawls uh, explained we don't find much to justify that this can be related to economic liberty in the economy islam gave these two concepts 1000 years before adam smith and raz gave the theories and islam explained these two things as a part of law not as a part of theory to be implemented is a part of law islamic law we call sharia and in this uh, laws we discover that distributive justice is part of economic economy uh, part of economics because economics is not merely in market in market there is no distributive justice economics markets are aimed at maximizing national wealth in that efficiency in that where pro capital are pro goes well uh, it is more productive activities goes well it is more productivity human resources go well it is more productive and this concept of course leads to the con concept of what we call capitalism and uh, similar things it is this concept of economics beyond market that has been distributed and discussed in the uh, quran and sunnah this gives out to uh, relate economics with distributive justice and this is i think this should be the theme, theme this should be the theme of today's conference the two papers uh, discuss one paper uh, per discuss about the market liberty in market the other paper discuss distributive justice and the third paper they are is focusing on property rights based on islamic law which 
in fact, if we understand them, uh, this, uh, this topic correctly, it explains the market and liberty in market and distributive justice in the economy. So I will suggest for this uh, uh, participant of this session that please focus on the theme that economic liberty is Islamic perspective of Islam. Islam promotes it. And that distributive justice is a part of this economic liberty. The three papers that I can say, two papers I have already seen, third paper also I am seeing it uh, to very uh, respectable paper. They are very good papers. They are very good uh, uh, presentation that they will be making on the, their ideas. The discussion that will come afterward, the comments that will be made afterwards, I request that they should not f focus on commenting the papers or making questions to them. I will suggest that please give ideas to this theme of economic liberty and distributive justice, how they can go hand in hand in a Muslim economy, in an Islamic economy. So with this uh, uh, introduction, I request my, my uh, learned uh, scholars to present their papers. And please, uh, because the, the time will be so short, thank you, I'm glad. I'll be uh, happy if uh, uh, the scholars take 15 minutes as described by the organizers. And so we can, uh, get some good discussion also on the theme rather than on papers within the time that organizers have given for this session. So according to this, um, the list that organizers have prepared, I first request Dr. Hafez of Furqani, lecturer in the uh, University of Universitas Islam Nigeria, Indonesia. Indonesia. <laughs> Um, is a very scholar, good scholar, and I have seen his uh, presentation elsewhere also. So I request him to make his presentation, and please let's take to the time of 15 minutes. Please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. The title of my uh, paper is uh, The Theory of Distributive Justice uh, in Islamic Perspective Conceptual Explorations. Uh, I'm a lecturer at the State Islamic University uh, of Arra Amiri in uh, Aceh, Indonesia. Uh, the paper basically will try to explore uh, the concept or the theory of uh, distributive justice in which I try to uh, gather from the Quranic, uh, from the Quran. So it is uh, about the Quranic principles of distributive justice. So for that, uh, I will also try to discuss the theory of distributive justice in the conventional perspective in the modern theory of distributive justice in which uh, there are at least six theories of distributive justice and then after that we try to see what Islam says about distributive justice and then uh, and that uh, I will try to find uh, from the Quran. So uh, the perspective of distributive justice uh, as has been explained by uh, Prof. Fahim Khan that the concern basically is about the distributions of output of fractions. But then this paradigm has changed. It is not only about the output production distributions, but also about uh, whether in this distribution there is justice or not. So it is about just allocations of uh, productions, of output of fractions. 
So uh, the questions, uh, the concern has been uh, widened to include also uh, whether uh, the object, what is the object of distributions? Is it well only? Is it income or even utility or welfare? And then uh, how this uh, distribution, how, how the, the distributive justice uh, can be realized? And then uh, there are many other questions. Uh, how can we solve the problems of poverty, the problems of uh, inequality, which is also the concerns in the distribution problems. So based on this uh, perspective, then there are many theories that, that try to solve the problems and offer perspective on how distributive justice uh, can be achieved. In, in the Islamic perspective, in Islamic economics, uh, we have seen uh, many scholars also write uh, or give us perspective on what should be the, dis the concept of distributive justice uh, in Islamic perspective. For example, uh, Muhammad Anas Zarqa uh, who wrote that in Islamic economics, the concern is not only about the functional income distributions, but it is also about the uh, transfer of goods and services and also transfer of wealth, whether this can be done through market or through state, uh, whether this uh, can be done voluntarily or involuntarily. So uh, the discussion is very rich, uh, either in the conventional and Islamic perspective. So here uh, we have at least uh, six theories uh, that explains the concept of distributive justice, and we can see uh, the differences among the theories. Uh, the first theory is, is uh, called as strict uh, egalitarianism. So uh, this theory says that uh, uh, the second is the difference uh, principles, which is argued by uh, John Rawls. So uh, in the in this theory, the differences is uh, acknowledged. Yeah? So differences is normal in society, he said, uh, with the conditions that there an equal opportunity, uh, an equal rights in society. So uh, based on that uh, equal opportunity, whereby everybody can participate in the economy and can contribute, uh, the result will be uh, the, the variety of differences will exist in society. So that there, there will be and uh, differences in uh, the distributions. So some will get uh, higher and some will get less. So this is now according to uh, the difference principles theory. But uh, this, this theory also argues that it is, it is injustice if we take uh, by force eh, and uh, to, to that people who get more and give it uh, to the less, to the least privilege. And then we have also theory uh, resource, resources uh, based principles. Eh? Whereby uh, the inequalities happens in the society is because of two factors, ambitions as well as endowments. So as far as ambition is concerned, it is, about, it is also uh, similar with the previous theories whereby uh, everybody uh, uh, will have their own effort, uh, their own effort. So that's why the result will be uh, different, uh, and, and we will get uh, different uh, reward for that. So uh, the inequality will uh, normally exist in societies. And then we have also welfare-based principles. So this welfare-based principles basically is uh, utilitarian in nature, uh, which argues that uh, the distribution is not only about uh, wealth or income distributions, but the concern is more on uh, the, the, the pleasure, uh, the happiness, the, the utility. So uh, the problems of distribution, uh, the justice distribution, should also uh, take into concerns the distributions of uh, utility, of happiness. So uh, this theory is basically very much uh, subjective in nature because the focus is on 
it, it, is, it, it will be justice if a person can maximize uh, his utility. And then uh, there is uh, also uh, basic, basic, eh? base principles, uh, which says that uh, the basis of a lot uh, will be uh, three factors. Uh, contributions, effort, and uh, compensations. The, the same thing applies whereby uh, those who contribute, those who put, uh, who put effort, and those who uh, put some uh, cost in their works and compensations will get, uh, will get more, or will get uh, more uh, in terms of distribution. They deserve for uh, vari var 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 varieties level of incomes in which inequality uh, will be exist also, and that is uh, normal. And then uh, the last one is the libertarian principles. Well, by, uh, the in, in this perspective uh, developed by uh, Robert Muzik, he says that uh, he, he, uh, he proposed for the principles of entitlement. Whereby well, uh, there are three levels of justice. Eh? The first is justice in acquisitions, uh, in which uh, individual ownership is legitimate, uh, and then justice in transfer, whereby, uh, just, uh, whereby transfer or, or, or is just only if it is uh, done, in, done uh, voluntarily, yeah? voluntary uh, transfer, and justice in rectifications, whereby uh, if there is something uh, in illegitimate acquisitions or illegitimate transfer, then, then this can be rectified. So that will be uh, justice. So you can see uh, there are various uh, perspectives on uh, what is distributive justice and what con consists of uh, distributive justice. And if we try to find similarities uh, with the Islamic perspective, I found there are some uh, principles which are similar and then there are some which are not similar. So to explore uh, what is Islamic uh, perspective on distributive justice, I follow what uh, uh, Mr. Ali Salman has uh, tried to explain in the morning sessions to develop the principles. And that principles, I try to find it uh, from the Quranic perspective. So if you read my paper, there are various ayat from the Quran that, that talk about this uh, theory of distributive justice. And, and if we can sum up, there are, to, to explain the concept of distributive justice, these are the, the whole principles. So we have six, at least six principles uh, to explain the concept of distributive justice. The first principle is the, the, the principle of risk. risk provisions eh? and then the principle of kasab effort and then the principle of amana trust and then the principles of hukuk or haq trust uh, or rights eh? and then the principle of infaq uh, spending and then the principles of amana so in the the first principle which is the principle of uh, of uh, the principle of risk uh, it is mentioned in the Quran that uh, Allah has created everything and everything uh, on earth and on, on the heaven is belongs to Allah. So this is the, the basic principle that mentioned in the Quran repeatedly. And uh, it is mentioned also that all creations created by Allah is uh, subservience or tasakhir uh, to mankind to perform the function uh, to perform uh, the, the function of uh, ibad or as a servant and to perform his functions of uh, or the khalifa of Allah and then it is mentioned also in the Quran that uh, the provisions that Allah has given uh, to mankind is not equal yeah. so uh, the, the, the Allah provisions or risk uh, to each individual uh, might be not similar. Wallahu fadala ba'dukum fawqa ba'dun darajat. So some will get more 
and some will get less. And then uh, the principle of kasab, effort. In the Quran, uh, it is also mentioned that everybody must strive uh, for his own uh, basics, basic needs, yeah? to fulfill uh, his needs, then everybody uh, must put effort. And uh, for that effort that has been put, uh, this will form the, the basis uh, for the ownerships. So individual ownerships uh, for wealth or income is justified if a person put his own effort. So that is explained in the Surah Al-Ahqaf. And then, uh, yeah, the, fruit, the fruits of one's effort is approved and considered as his uh, legitimate ownership. So uh, we can see similarities with the previous theories and the different uh, principles, whereby uh, differences in the provisions of wealth is acknowledged in, in the Quran uh, because of uh, differences of effort, uh, differences of knowledge, difference of uh, capacities, capabilities, then some of us may, may get more in terms of wealth and some may get less. And this is explained in the Quran, in the Surah An-Nisa. لِرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِنْ مَكْتَسَبُ وَلِلْنِسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِنْ مَكْتَسَبُ And it is also mentioned, وَلِكُلِّمْ دَرَجَاتٌ مِنَّا عَمِلُوا وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ أَمَّا يَعْمِلُونَ And then we have another principles, the principles of Amanah, trust. Yeah? So uh, the Quran also reminds us that uh, all resources, all provisions, income and wealth uh, that has been given to us is basically a trust or an amana. So amana means that we have to follow uh, yeah, the, the rules and we have to follow the, the regulations. Eh? Okay, and then uh, the, the, there is also the principle of responsibility uh, in wealth spendings, and, and this is uh, related to uh, the next principles. But I would like to say that this principle of amana uh, brings harmony between individual interests and public interests. So the principle, the next principle is the principle of hukuk or right, haq, yeah? whereby Islam acknowledges the private ownerships. But at the same time, uh, in the Quran, it is also mentioned that there is rights of others uh, in our own wealth, in our own income. So uh, this constitutes the two two haq, haq has and haq an in, 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 the, in the world. And this will create a balance in the society. And then the principle of infaq, uh, this is less discussed in the theory of distributive justice in the conventional perspective whereby in the conventional perspective is more on about entitlement, about rights but less discussions about transfer, about the spendings and about the redistributions so uh, in the Quran uh, it, it is mentioned that individual should be uh, spent uh, either voluntarily or involuntarily, we can discuss later on and then the last one is the principle of or the principle of justice, whereby uh, this principle constitutes the hard core, the core of the principle of relativity in Islam, whereby uh, not only in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the society, but all cosmic uh, creation is basically the purpose is to create this adala or just or balance. Eh? So, uh, yeah. Okay. I will conclude uh, this. Uh, uh, this is the source of inequality, and this is the the solutions uh, from the Quran. Whereby later on uh, we can say that the problems of uh, distribution in society, this will uh, Islam uh, uh, encourage to be solved through uh, individual consciousness to share and to, to either voluntarily or involuntarily. Yeah. I think uh, that's uh, all in the paper that try to discuss and develop the principles of distributive justice uh, in Islamic perspective uh, and, and we can argue from six uh, principles. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
sort of uh, presentation on distributive justice.